graphing rational functions. Okay, we have added, subtracted, multiplied, divided, simplified. Uh, with all these rational, we've solved rational equations. Let's look at graphing these rational functions. Um, and we're going to look at this from the perspective of, I'm not sitting here with a calculator in my hand, okay? Um, I know you are, okay? So we will reference it a little bit, but the whole point of this is you've got to know how to do these things without it. So we have four discontinuities. Now, technically, the first one is not a discontinuity. So really, the better word here would be characteristics, okay? Let's mark out discontinuities and put characteristics um, because horizontal asymptotes are not a discontinuity. Okay, um, these, the other three, are discontinuities, but a horizontal asymptote is not actually a discontinuity. Horizontal asymptotes have to do with end behavior, okay, so that's kind of why I brought up that warm-up question, um, because that's going to come into play. Now, I do realize that you covered most of this in Map 3. Uh, you should have talked about horizontal asymptotes and holes and vertical asymptotes. Now, I don't believe that we cut, I, no, I don't think I did it in my class, I don't know whether it's going or did or not, but slant asymptotes really aren't part of the Math 3 curriculum. Um, so that's kind of the new one, that's what's going to be new to us here in a little while. We'll probably get to that one tomorrow. Um, but the other parts should be a review to you. But I went ahead and put it all on uh, the notes here so we don't have to spend a lot of time copying stuff down. You can just kind of listen to uh, my explanation. Now, the number one thing that I want to emphasize with horizontal asymptotes, we abbreviate it HA, is that a graph can cross a horizontal asymptote. Okay? It doesn't usually, but it can cross a horizontal asymptote. And usually if it does that, it does it kind of in the middle of the function here. Uh, not at the ends. Uh, I do. Okay. All right. Here is the word. Okay. Um, because a horizontal asymptote has nothing to do with undefined values. Okay. A horizontal asymptote has nothing to do with undefined values. What a horizontal asymptote does is it describes our end behavior. Okay. The end behavior, so the y value that your function is approaching on the ends. So, for example, here's a little sketch of a rational function and a horizontal asymptote in this case at 2. Um, so, the left side here is approaching 2, the right side is approaching 2. Um, uh, but the horizontal asymptote here is at y equals 2. Now, we've got three scenarios, okay? Three scenarios with a horizontal asymptote. If the top degree is less than the bottom degree, then your horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. So for example, x squared over x to the fourth, I use very simple examples here because I just wanted to zone in on it. x squared over x to the fourth, the bottom degree is bigger. Now, let me explain why the horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. Because if you know why, you don't have to memorize these answers or reasons, you can just reason through them if you have to figure out a horizontal asymptote. Now, let's think about it. It's in behavior. So we're plugging in really, really big numbers. So I'm taking a really big number and I'm squaring it. And I'm taking a really big number and I'm raising it to the fourth. Which one's bigger? If I square it or if I raise it to the fourth? Raising it to the fourth, okay? So I'm dividing by a really, really big number. When the denominator gets really, really big, what happens to the overall fraction? It gets small, right? One half, one third, one fourth, one fifth, one sixth. As that denominator is getting bigger, those fractions are getting smaller. So if I'm dividing by a really, really big number, this overall fraction is getting really, really small. We're headed towards zero. Okay? When the degree of the denominator is bigger, then your horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. All right? The next scenario is that if they're equal, okay, if they're equal, then our 
horizontal asymptote is y equals the ratio of the leading coefficients. Okay, the ratio of the leading coefficients when it's in standard form. Okay, it's got to be in standard form. So you look for the biggest exponent in the top and in the bottom. If they're the same, then you put the ratio of those coefficients there. So this example would be y equals 3. Okay. Um, okay. Third scenario. If the top degree is bigger than the bottom degree, so the top is a lot bigger than the bottom, so we've just got a really big number in general, that means we don't have a coronal asymptote. We're not headed towards a specific value. We're going to be shooting off to either positive infinity or negative infinity. Um, we could possibly have a slant asymptote, and we'll talk about uh, the specific conditions for a slant asymptote tomorrow. Um, but if the top is bigger than the bottom, no horizontal asymptote. That's what you need to know right now. Okay? Because the overall number is getting really, really big. We're not headed towards a specific value. Okay, so let's figure out the horizontal asymptote if there is one of each of these functions right here. Example number one, 2x over 3x squared plus 1. So we're comparing the degrees. What is the degree of the numerator? 1. There's no exponent there. It's understood to be 1. The denominator is degree 2. So what scenario are we looking at? y equals 0. You must put y equals. You must put y equals because these are horizontal lines. Okay, don't just put 0. You gotta put y equals here. Okay, how about number two? Degrees are the same, squared over squared. Okay, notice the bottom's not in standard form though. Okay, you just look for the biggest degree. So this is going to be y equals two over three. It's the coefficients that are on um, the highest powered exponent. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you ignore the one, okay? Because we're talking about in behavior. So we're talking about plugging in a really, really, really big number. If we square a really, really big number and multiply it by three, adding one isn't going to change that result, okay? So the one really has no um, effect, okay? All right, and then example three, what are we looking at? None, okay? No horizontal asymptote because the numerator has a bigger degree than the denominator, okay? Um, now, just a little foreshadowing, this one does have a slant asymptote, okay? This one does have a slant asymptote, but we'll get to that in a minute. What's up? No problem. Okay, next thing we're gonna look at are holes. Okay, next thing we're going to look at are holes. So flip your paper over. Okay, holes come from factors that cancel. So guess what? Factoring, I told you it wasn't going to go away, didn't I? Yeah, it's back. Okay, so we got to factor these things, and anything that cancels creates a hole. Holes are created by zero over zero. Okay. If you plugged in the number, then you would get 0 over 0. I don't have that written down here, uh, but you should put a little note over there. It's 0 over 0 is a whole. Okay? So after we factor and cancel, we take those uh, that factor that we canceled out, we set it equal to 0, and we solve for x. Now, here's the deal with holes. You can see a horizontal asymptote when you look at the graph. You can see that on your calculator. Uh, but if you look at the graph of something as a whole, it doesn't show up. Okay, It just looks like life is normal. There's no issue. Uh, so you got to know what you're doing to be able to find a hole. But the good news is it does show up as an error in the table. Uh, so that helps. But vertical asymptotes also show up as errors. So you kind of got to know which one's which. Um, and we call it, a fancy word for a hole is a removable discontinuity. Okay, it's a removable discontinuity because it's just one little isolated issue. We could fill it in and we could fix the problem. 
Okay, so we've talked about horizontal asymptotes and now holes. So with these examples, we're going to start with the horizontal asymptote and then we're going to figure out if we have any holes. Okay, so horizontal asymptote. Do we have one on example two, number one? No, no horizontal asymptote because the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. All right, how does the numerator factor? Good. X plus 1, X minus 1. Okay? And the denominator can't factor that because it's just a linear term. Okay, so we've got X minus 1 in the top and in the bottom. So our simplified rational expression here is X plus 1. Now, for holes, we take what we canceled and we set it equal to 0. We canceled X minus 1, so we set that equal to 0. So we get x equals 1, but I don't want just the x value. I need the y value as well. Does anybody remember how to get the y value? Plug it into what? We can't plug it into the original because if we plug in 1 into the original, we get 0 over 0. We plug it into the simplified part. So the simplified part is uh, x plus 1, so 1 plus 1 is 2. 1, 2 is the location of our hole. Okay, so when I ask you about holes, you have to give me the x and the y value. I'm not satisfied with just x equals 1. I need to know the y value as well. Okay, because that's where the point should be. The point should be at 2. So let me show you something. If we graph this, the original uh, uh, rational function here, Okay, you all know that rational functions typically have like those two curves, right? That's what they normally look like, so let's graph this one. Uh, that doesn't look like two curves to me. It looks like a straight line. Well, that's because the simplified version, x plus 1, is what it really looks like. Okay, it looks like, that looks like the line, x plus 1. Y-intercept of 1, slope of 1, okay? Um, but if we look at the table... Look at what happens at x equals 1. We have an error, and look at what its y value should be. We're counting by 1s here, so the y value should be 2. All right, the y value should be 2. Um, another way you can check this is you can plug in the original, and then you can plug in your simplified version, and you can go to the table. And all the y values should be the same, uh, except where there was a hole. Um, and you'll see the y value of the hole. Okay, a little cheat there. Okay, let's look at example two. Let's look at example two. Um, horizontal asymptote, do we have one? Nope, we don't have one on this one either. No horizontal asymptote, degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. Okay, so how do we factor, how do we factor that numerator? Alright. Y'all factor that numerator and denominator. Um, you can take all right, how do we factor the numerator? By flipping. Yay! Somebody remembered something. Alrighty, and the denominator, x plus 3 times x minus 1. Can we factor the numerator more? Yes, x squared minus 1 is x plus 1 times x minus 1.
Okay, so the same factor that, that canceled in the previous problem cancels here, x minus 1. So our whole occurs at the same x value, x minus 1 equal to 0, so x equals positive 1 is where it occurs, but to find out what its value is, we plug it into the simplified version, okay? The simplified version of our function is x minus 6 times x plus 1 over x plus 3. So we're going to plug it in, plug in 1 for x. So 1 minus 6 is negative 5, 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 3 is 4, so we've got negative 10 over 4, those are both divisible by 2, so negative 5 over 2, our whole is at 1, negative 5 halves. Okay, our whole is at 1, negative 5 halves. Now you've got to be careful if you're trying to plug that into your calculator to make sure that you got the right thing. Make sure when you're plugging in the original, you put parentheses around the entire numerator, the entire denominator, okay, in your y1. And in y2, you need more than just these parentheses as well. You've got to put a whole set of parentheses around the numerator and then a set of parentheses around the denominator, okay? Or else it, it's not going to work out, okay? So parentheses around the entire numerator, entire denominator, plus any little other parentheses you have. Okay, I'm not going to take the time to go through that one, but uh, you, I think you can trust me on that. All right, so here's what I want you to do.